this video will show a demonstration on your Miltronix 8200B control. We're going to be setting it up and milling a frame and milling a pocket. So the first thing you're going to want to do is press F8 program, F2 conversational edit, F2 new. Now you're going to give your program a name, either letters or numbers. We'll just call this one sample 8200. Hit enter. Now it brings in your conversational program. Your first event, you can write your name of the program if you want to. We'll just say sample. Hit enter. You're going to have F3 come available here. You can toggle through either inch or metric. We'll program an inch. And hit enter to come down to your solid model stock size. So for this example, we'll say we're going to have a 6x6 six six block. X0, Y0 will be the center. So your X minimum would be negative 3. Your Y minimum would be negative 3. Z0 will be the top. X max will be 3. Y max will be 3. And your Z max will be the thickness of your plate. So if this one's 1 inch, we'll say negative 1. Hit enter again to come down to your work coordinate. And you can see F3 is toggle. You can toggle through G54, 55, and so on. We'll just start this one with work coordinate of 54. And if you'd want to use a subset, you could hit enter and select your different subsets in that field just by toggling through. We'll just leave it at G54 for this operation. We're going to hit enter, and here would be if you'd want to leave your operator any setup notes, you could type them in this field. And when you're done filling out your information, you hit F1 store. So the first thing we're going to want to do is call up F5 tool change. If you want to do a tool change at a certain position and jog your table out of the way, you can enter a certain position in these fields. If you just enter down your tool number field, you're going to do a tool change right at the position where the table is sitting, which is usually acceptable if you don't have a tall workpiece. So just come down your tool number. Tool number will be 1. Your tool description is not required, but you can type in whatever your tool is. We'll say it's going to be a half inch end mill for tool number 1. Hit enter to come down your stop command. You can toggle through if you want to use a program stop, optional stop, or no stop at all. We'll toggle to optional stop. Hit enter to our spindle speed field. We'll tell it we're going to run at 1500 RPMs and hit enter to your spindle direction. Again, you can hit F3 toggle to clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll go clockwise. Hit enter to get to your coolant. And now you're going to see F3 to toggle through. you got flood, mist, air, through the spindle, all of your machines equipped. We'll just say we're going to use basic flood on this one. And you have another opportunity to change your work coordinate or select a different one throughout your program. But we'll just leave it set at G54 like we did on our first page. So now hit F1 store. And now you have all your different options of what operation you want to do if you want to mill, drill, a bolt hole, do a tool change, miscellaneous functions. We're going to be doing a mill, F2. And are you going to be doing a pocket, a frame, 3D pocket, threading? We'll just say we're going to be doing a frame, so we press F6. And now within your frame setup, you can toggle through your different choices also by hitting F3. So you got rectangular finish outside, outside polygon, circle finish outside. We'll stay with rectangular finish outside. Press enter to give it our Z Pierce feed rate, which can be 50, and that's in inches per minute. Your return point will be your clearance, and now you tell it what your clearance is going to be. And if you're not sure what it's asking, there's a little illustration on the bottom left corner. So our clearance point will be 0.1. Hit enter. In your Z-Down method, you have an option to toggle through of either plunging or ramping. If you ramp, you have to give it an angle of ramp. We'll just plunge. Hit enter to our final depth. We'll say negative 750. And we'll say our first depth to be negative 375 with the 375 depth increment. X and Y feed rate. We'll use 35 inches a minute. And we'll say our frame center is the center of our block, which would be x0, y0. Our frame dimension, we'll say we're at 5.75 on x and 5.875 on y. 
in our corner radius. We'll give it a 125 corner radius. In your cut direction, defaults to clockwise climb cutting. You can F3 toggle if you want counterclockwise conventional milling also. We'll leave it at clockwise climb with the compensation on. Hit F1 store. And that would be your program for milling the frame. Now we're going to lift up and do a pocket in the center of this block. So it's like that five pocket. And in your pocket you also have some choices to toggle through. You've got circle pocket, rectangular pocket, polygon, slotting, facing, and back to circle pocket. We're going to do a circle pocket and you can either clear it, which plunges in the center of the pocket, or you can toggle to finish, which is going to plunge in the center, but only is going to cut on your outer dimension, whatever you define as your radius. So we'll toggle it back to clear for this operation. Z pierce feed rate, we'll say 25, and our return point will be our clearance, and our clearance will be 100 thou. Z down, we'll plunge. Our final depth will be a half inch. First depth can be a quarter inch with a quarter inch increment. XY feed rate, pocket center, we'll say that center is also center of our workpiece. So zero and zero. Starting radius. We'll put 300 thou for this one since we're using a half inch tool, but that would be that's meant for if you have like a one inch drill maybe comes through and drills a hole that you can plunge into. Then your starting radius could be 0.5 so you don't have to waste all that time spiraling out if you already have the material removed by a drill or a casting. So hit enter. Pocket radius, that'd be your finish radius. We'll say 0.75. Cut width of 0.2. If you want to leave any material on your walls for a finishing operation, you can define that here. And again, it's set up to counterclockwise climb cut with compensation on. So select F1 store. And that would be your program for milling your frame and milling the pocket. Now if we want to add another tool, we'll do a tool change, F5. And we'll hit enter down to the tool number field. We'll say tool 2 will be a 5 16th drill. Again, the description is not required. Stop command. You can toggle to program or optional. Use optional. Give it an RPM. Hit enter to come down to our spindle direction. We'll toggle it to clockwise. Hit enter to flood. Toggle it and hit F1 store. Now you can do just a basic drilling cycle. You can do a bolt hole circle. For this operation we'll do a bolt hole circle. It should be F4. And it's going to give you some different choices to toggle through. Drill a bolt hole circle, drill with dwell, pack, chip breaker, boring, boring with dwell, fast bore, tapping. So let's say we're going to toggle it to drill pack cycle. Hit enter to give it a Z pierce feed rate. Again, it has your illustration on the bottom left corner. So we're going to give it a pierce feed rate of 9 inches per minute. And your spindle on clockwise RPM, that field is black, so you don't have to enter anything there because we did that on our tool change page. If you want to enter a different RPM, you can do that, and the machine will change. If not, it'll run at what you programmed on your tool change page. So we're just going to hit enter come all the way down to our clearance field. The clearance will be 0.1. The final depth will be negative 1.2. We're going to draw all the way through this plate. Your first Z depth and your cut increment and your pec clearance is just going to be the distance is going to stop before it engages in the feed rate again after it pecks out of the hole. Your bolt hole center We'll say the center of our block is x0, y0. The bolt hole radius, we'll say 2.5. Angle of the first hole, so this is my center, 
this would be zero if I want my first hole at 45. I'd enter 45 if I want it at 90, and so on. For this, I'll just say the angle of my first hole is going to be at zero. Number of holes to be made. I'll do eight holes. And number of holes in a 360 degree circle. So that's also going to be eight. If I'd want to only drill half a bolt hole circle, I could say the number of holes to be made would be four. And by telling it there's eight holes in a 360 degree circle, I'd know how to space them correctly. And holes to skip, if you would have an operation where you maybe have a broken drill and you're tapping the bolt hole circle, you could give it the number of whatever hole that is in the sequence, and it'll skip that hole and just continue on with the bolt hole circle. But for this, it's a new part. We're not going to skip any holes. So we're going to hit F1 store. So that bolt hole circle will be complete now. We can hit escape. At the end of the program, the spindle is going to shut off, the coolant is going to shut off, and Z to home position. Those are all toggled to yes. You can change them if you don't want any of that to happen. So we're going to hit escape to get back to our main bar. Now we're going to hit F9 verify. And here's our program. We're going to hit F1 select. F1 start. And now I'm on my desktop unit, so it's going to say Alt and F6 to start the program from the beginning. If you're on your machine, it would say press cycle start to start from the beginning. And now you can see your optional stop with program. So on your machine, it will say press cycle start because an optional stop was encountered. the optional stop for tool 2. We're going to go to my graphics screen was not um, I didn't F4 auto to focus it so now it's F4 auto and our part is focused. I'm going to F1 solid so you can see your solid model graphics and your tool path representation. So we're going to verify it again just so we can see since I didn't have it focused right last time. So we're going to hit F9 verify F1 start, Alt and F6, it'll be, it'll be just cycle start for your actual machine. So now there's my tool plunging, it's going around, you can see the current depth that it's at. So it's milling around, and we can hit escape just to get to our different display, F6 display. We've got a few different modes in F10 here. Push F10 to get to like a wireframe. Here's the semi transparent solid model. And the green lines are your actual feed rate lines, the red lines are rapid movements. So now it's going to go down to 0 0.750, which is our final depth. It's going to go around again to finish out that frame. You can press F9 verify, F8 fast if you would like to go through in a fast dry run mode. You can toggle that on and off. You see right now it's at a depth of 500 thou. So the pocket's almost done. It's going to go up and do a tool change after the pocket. As you can see here you got F4 optional stop highlighted. That's why it stopped. If you don't want optional stop executed, you can press F4 to shut it off. So now we're doing our PEC cycle. Again, you can hit display F10 mode to go to a few different modes. You can see the, the drill as drilling through your plate. Hit escape one time to get back to your F8 fast mode. We'll go to fast, let it run out. So now you can see the eight different holes and your cycle time estimate is 3 minutes 49 seconds. Hit F6 display mode again. There's your solid model. You can hit F1 rotate and you can orbit it, tilt it. You can roll your part different directions. You can always go back to isometric view. X, X, Y, X, Z, 
XYZ, depending on what your part is. It kind of depends which one you want to select. So that would be your, your conversational program for milling the frame, milling a pocket, doing a bolt hole circle, and um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, let me know, and uh, we can go from there. So this is your Miltronics 8200B control. Thank you.